Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. I'm so excited for today's video because I worked really hard on this one to make it as informative for you guys as possible. So for today's video, I am going to be showing you three different techniques to using the new Vizzy Art Koi palette. This isn't their newest palette that came out, but it did come out about a month ago. And unfortunately, I really wanted to get this review up for you guys as soon as it came out, but I had so much going on that I just decided instead of rushing to get it out, I wanted to take the time to make this video as informative as possible for you guys to really teach you how to use this palette and how versatile this palette actually can be because looking at this palette it does look quite intimidating you really can create a lot of different amazing looks with this palette if you incorporate it with the right colors so just some quick details about this palette this is $80 which is very expensive but you guys know that Viseur is one of my favorite eyeshadow formulas I have been so obsessed with their eyeshadows the past few months. As a makeup artist, I really appreciate their packaging because you can actually take these pans out. They're all magnetic as well as all of their other palettes. So for example, in this video, I use the Viseart Grande Pro 1 palette a lot. You can actually take these colors out and mix and match them with these to create your perfect palette. I personally think that this palette will pair amazingly with the editorial palette. I don't have that palette, but I want it really, really bad. And when I saw this palette when it was about to be released, I was like, oh, that palette would go great with the editorial palette and oh, I might buy it. I really, really want it so bad. So I did want to thank Muse Beauty Pro for sending me this palette. I am so appreciative. You guys know I love Vizier and I probably would have bought this palette by myself anyways. So I am so thankful that they, you know, were kind enough to send this to me. It's a small company. You guys know I really support them. I think they really do care about their customers. I was a customer before they sent me any palettes. So I do have an affiliate link with them of course if you use it it does come back to help out my channel but don't feel any pressure to check out their website they have Viseart which you guys know is my favorite brand that they have there but they also have Ket which is a great brand for makeup artists and a lot of other fun stuff I really want to try the Lemonhead LA glitters but anyways check out their website they have a lot of cool other stuff so, and quick details about this palette I want to get through it really fast 12 shades they're all the same formula which is the satin crystalline formula which is similar to the first column in the Grande Pro 2 palette, which you guys know I love that palette. So if you really like that column, that formula, you will love this. And first of all, the colors, when you look at this, doesn't it scream spring? This is the perfect spring palette. I actually created a perfect spring look using this palette and you guys will see. Now what's interesting is it says it's the ultra crystalline formula. However, I find that there are different formulas within this palette. Some are more sheer, some are more duochrome, and some have more glitters and some are more shimmery. So you do get a wide array of different looks. For example, this color, this color, and this color, and this color actually, are all very, very pigmented, whereas this color and this color have more of a sheer base, but a very strong duochrome. So where it is sheer, it has a strong duochrome. And these colors layer great over other colors. So even though they are similar formula with a similar feel, I feel like they are very, very different as well. I did create three looks using three different techniques just to kind of show you guys what all this palette can do. So the first look I created is an icy blue look. I use the technique of wetting the shadows using a mixing medium to really get a metallic finish on the eye to really create that beautiful icy look. The second look I did was using the palette completely dry and I created a soft purple spring look which I thought was so beautiful, very monochromatic, very simple and oh my gosh it's gonna look gorgeous in the spring. And the third look is my favorite. It's my favorite technique to use with this palette it's actually all about layering so I'm about to insert a clip explaining the layering of the shadows because ugh, as much as these shadows are great used wet or dry if you use this as a layering palette you will transform looks I am not even kidding so I'm about to insert a little segment about layering using swatches so I really wanted to show you guys the power of layering with the Koi palette the top swatches are the original Original colors and then the bottom swatches are the Koi colors layered on top of a base color. Now I use the base colors from the Vizzy Art Grande Pro 1 just to keep it consistent but as you can see this really transformed the Koi colors and it really shows what you can do with these duochrome sheer shades. So right here is a sheer pink shade. I put it on top of a white. It became almost a silver color. 
this one's one of my favorites. This is the one from the look today. I used a black and then I used the shimmery green on top and it creates the most crazy green, beautiful, smoky eye. This is another one of my favorites. The icy blue from the first tutorial on top of this navy color creates one of my favorite colors. The light gold shade from the Koi palette on top of a brown creates a beautiful bronze. I used the sheer pink purple shade on top of a flat purple. This would create the most beautiful, deep purple smoky eye. Another green on top of the black, just so you can see the differences. And then I used this red shade on top of a white, and it almost created like a shimmery pink. So I just wanted to show you how versatile this palette is when you really layer it and work off of other shades. This is another great technique to using this palette. All right, now that you have seen that, let's head straight into the first tutorial, which is showing you how you can use these shadows with. So for this first look, we are going to be doing like this really pretty icy blue wintry look. Before I get started, I am going to stamp some loose translucent powder right here just so we can keep the edge sharp but not too sharp like tape. So I am quickly going to go in with my Vizzy Art Grande Pro 1 for my transition color. So I'm going to start off with this blue gray right here and just put that all over the crease. I'm trying not to use more than two shades from the Grande palette since this is about the Koi palette. Here's a little tip. If you notice that your translucent powder is kind of coming off, that's okay. That's going to happen. All you have to do is just... Oops. But yeah, <laughs> all you have to do is just stamp over again and that will fix all of your problems. I'm going in with the navy shade and we're just going to put that in the crease, focusing that on the outer corner first and then bringing that in. So now we can finally get into the Koi palette. So I'm using these two colors right here for this first look. So I'm going to take the Wayne Goss number no. 7 and we're going to start off with the minty blue shade right here. So I'm going to use the Isum Pro Mixing Medium. So what you're going to do is you're just going to squirt a little bit of a mixing medium on the back of your hand and wet your brush in that mixing medium. And then you're going to go directly into the palette. You can use these shadows both wet and dry. So these colors can come off a little bit more sheer and ethereal if you will if you use them dry and then when you use them wet that's how you can get a more foiled look on your eyelid so it just depends like as you can see this shade is quite foiled but if i just wanted a more subtle ethereal blue look for the spring i could just use it dry as you can see i'm patting it from the outer corner and then i'm leaving about a third of my lid space for the brighter champagne color so next i'm going to go in with this shade which i'm actually going to use dry but with a more stiff brush to pack on the color more I want it to be a little bit more soft on the inner corner, so that is why I am using it dry. I'm using the Sonia G Smudger Brush, by the way, to pack this on. And as you can see, this shade in particular is quite pigmented without being wet anyways. You will find some of the shadows in this palette. They're supposed to have a more sheer finish that you can use a mixing medium with, and there are still some colors in this palette that are quite pigmented to be honest. So we're going to add a fun pink element to this look. So I'm going to take this corner shade down here. Now this shade as you can see it comes off like white in the pan but on your fingers you get a really strong pearled pink duochrome effect. Then I'm going to pop this underneath the brow bone and it just adds a little bit of a fun element to the look. Also kind of pat that right in the inner corner. So the navy color I used on my crease. I'm just gonna kind of smudge that along my lower lash line. So now that we have this really cool ethereal blue eyeshadow, I'm going to add some white to my waterline. I'm going to skip on eyeliner for this look because I really want the blue to show. So I'm gonna put on some mascara and lashes really fast. For eyelashes today, I'm going to use the Cake Face Beauty Lion Hearted Lashes. Okay, so while those lashes are drying, I actually had this last second epiphany about what I wanted to do. I'm going to take the Eye Candy 
glitter and sugar cane and then I'm going to take the Urban Decay Heavy Metal Midnight Cowboy liquid liner. I put some of the eye candy glitter on my hand and I'm going to directly take the brush from Urban Decay and I'm going to mix that in to make the glitter a little bit more opaque from the Midnight Cowboy and we're going to make a line right across the lash line and then we're going to make it a wing. The point of mixing the Midnight Cowboy Liner with the Sugar Cane Glitter is it's going to make the liner more visible because you're adding those extra glitter pigments as well as Sugar Cane itself has a black glitter in it so that's also going to add more definition. Oh my goodness, that's so cool. Okay, so that just added something really fun to the look. Now we're going to put on lashes. Boom! There we have it. So this is look number one. Okay, so for this second look, I wanted to do a really simple monochromatic spring look that you guys I think would really love because it's really simple to do. I feel as though this look is a good representation of what you can do with the palette as well. But just like the last look, I am going to dig into my Visi Art Grande Pro 1 palette. I'm only going to use one shade from it. So I'm just going to use this simple lilac shade right here. This actually comes off a lot darker than it looks in the pan. <gasps> wow, I just realized I forgot to put concealer on. Okay, but as you can see, this color is way deeper than it looks in the pan, but it's just a really pretty kind of lilac purple. You can just use any matte lilac shade, but of course, I like the Visi Art Granny Pro one a lot. Really fast, I'm gonna add some concealer. I can't believe I forgot to do that. I thought I was looking tired. All right, so now we get to dig into the Koi palette. On a smaller blending brush, I'm gonna take the deeper purple shade and I'm just going to apply that into my crease. It's okay to add a shimmer shade into the crease. Don't let those makeup rules freak you out, okay? I would always recommend having at least one matte shade in your crease, but then if you go in with the shimmer over top of it, I think that's okay. Maybe that's your makeup faux pas. And I'm also just running it along my lower lash line. As you can see, it is a pigmented color, but you can still use it all over. Honestly, you don't really need that lilac shade. I just did it for comfort, but if you just want to do this look using just this palette, you totally can. And now I'm going to go in with the lighter shade, and I'm just using my finger and I'm just gonna pat that literally everywhere. So this is going to create a really simple eye look. Okay, I didn't go quite so ham, hold on. <laughs> hold on, let me fix this. Then I'm just gonna use a blending brush just to kind of blend everything together. And as you can see, when you apply this color dry, it does blend out to a really pretty light shimmer. And if you want that extra glitter, of course, always use it wet, just like I stated in the last tutorial. And I'm gonna use my sponge just to kind of clean this area up. So if you think this looks a little messy, it's totally okay. That's the look we're going for, the super simple, a little bit blown out monochromatic look. And I'm just using a nude liner to open up my eye. I'm also going to use the e.l.f. liquid liner and I'm going to create a winged eyeliner. Okay, so I did a winged liner and then I decided to go for a lash that wasn't very multi-dimensional, very fluffy. I wanted it to be not so fluffy so you can see the eyeshadow. So I went with the Iconic Lashes by House of Lashes. And we are going to put in our inner corner highlight, which is this pink shade right here. And so this is one of those duochrome shades where it has a very sheer base. Then you really just see that pink duochrome chrome it's really really gorgeous this is one of my most used colors in this palette so far I use it in basically every look and then for my highlighter today I'm actually going to mix these two shades and that's what I'm going to use on my cheekbones so again you can use these shades as face highlighters as well that's so pretty so here's the overall second look using the Koi palette. So for this look, I wanted to do an all dry look, a look you didn't have to worry about wetting these shadows, just to show you how they work on the eye. Really soft, subtle, and pretty, and you know? And just because this is such a spring looking palette to me, I did want to bring you a very simple spring look. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Well, of 
for this look, I did not put on my face makeup first just because we are playing with black so that often has a lot of fallout and you don't want that to happen on top of your already beautiful makeup. So of course, we're starting off with the Grande Pro 1 and I'm taking this tan shade right here with more yellowy undertones and that's going to start off as our transition shade. I'm using the new Olimar crease brush. Brushes are so cheap and so soft. So all we need is that base color. Really fast, I am just going to apply one of the cream colors from that palette. I'm just going to go straight in for a matte black. What's awesome about this look is it's basically just a simple three colored shadow look. Now black eyeshadow can be very intimidating. My tip for you is to build it slowly. We didn't put down any face makeup first, so it's okay if it falls down. So I'm just starting off by placing that black shadow all over my lid, keeping the shade relatively low, not going like up here. And then you're going to take a designated crease brush. So this is the same brush I used for the other side to blend the black. Just gonna blend that into the tan shade. The look is more natural, more smoky. And just take your time, it's wonderful about using the Vizzy Art shadows, of course, is that they blend like a dream. Very difficult to find a good black, so. So now we're gonna use this magical green shade from the Koi palette. I'm just going to use my finger and I'm literally just gonna pat that right on top. Now using any of these colors in the palette over a black shade is really going to make them such a beautiful smoky eye. It's really going to emphasize the shimmers and glitters in the color. There's something about this light green shade over a black. And I'm just going in with my favorite kind of look, which is a really blown out shimmery lid. And then you can take that blending brush and just blend those shimmers out. They don't need to stay in one place. It's okay for them to go everywhere. Boom. All right, and now I'm going to take makeup wipe, clean up under here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish my face makeup and I will be right back. So I just finished my face makeup if you have any questions about what's on my face of course it will be linked in the description box but we're gonna finish our lower lash line work here and I'm basically just gonna use the same colors that I used on the upper eyelid so I'm starting off with the tan shade and that's just gonna be our base color on the lower lash line you hear barking that's my dog he's outside and now I'm going to go in with that matte black. Now I'm gonna focus that black mainly in the outer corner just because that's my eye shape. I have a smaller eye, so I don't wanna bring the black in too much. Now if you have big ol' eyes, go for it, and you really want that smoky lower lash line, go for it. JK, I'm gonna go for it too. When did I decide to go so crazy with this look? So if the black isn't this perfect, blended even smokiness underneath your eye that is okay i just want that black layer down there because we're going to go back in with the koi palette and we're going back in with this amazing green shade and we're running that just right over top of that black there's one thing you should know about my preferred style of makeup i just love everything being the same all the way around one color now i'm going to go in with a little bit more of that matte black and I'm just gonna blend that into the outer part of my eye just to really create smokiness in this look. And just so you know, I did highlight my inner corners and my cheekbones with the gold bar highlighter from Wet n Wild, which amazing, like $3 highlight. And as you can see, I'm blending the black a little bit up here as well. Using a black pencil, that guy goes in the waterline. Mascara, those lashes. Okay, so for a lash style, I personally would go with something that is short and fluffy. I think that would be the most flattering for this look, but of course, every eye shape is different and everybody has a different preference, but the lash I'm going for is good old Lily Con. These are probably my favorite lashes in the whole world. That pair is really nasty and has been used so many times but we're gonna give it another wear, so I will be right back. All right, so this is the finished look. Of course, everything about this look will be down below in the description box, and this is the final look for the video. So I hope you found this video helpful. I just really wanted to be very informative about this palette, how you can use it, and the best way to get the most out of this eyeshadow palette, because it can look quite intimidating, but it actually is a very, very versatile palette. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video 
a thumbs up if you found it helpful and follow my Instagram. I will be posting pictures of the looks that I created. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and remember to subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Have a great day.